Hey guys and welcome to Leicestershire, uh, which is Middle England uh, and a place I didn't really intend to come. There's not a lot of great beer around this part of the country. However, I was at London Craft Beer Festival a couple of weeks ago and my favourite beer of the festival was a lager. Um, it was a New Zealand pills from a brewery I'd never heard of called Braybrook. Um, and so here I am in Braybrook, I had to find out more. Uh, that beer was like, it smelled like lemon and lime and was really biscuity uh, and bready. And it was just a beautifully made, really crisp, clean lager with lots of kind of Germanic Pilsner kind of heritage feel to it. And that's no surprise because these guys have some ties to a Bavarian Franconian brewery called Mars. And they've managed to set themselves in one of the most beautiful surroundings ever. So we came down to their harvest celebration where they harvest their wheat and their rapeseed. Uh, and we came to see the brewery and see how they make beer. So, so delicious that I was turning away IPAs, Imperial Stouts, Saisons, uh, Lambic style beers, just in favor of an amazing Pilsner. <laughs> It's no secret that Brad and I love lager. Decades of crap macro beer has given it a bad name, stripping the nuance and the art from it. But nothing in the craft beer world excites me more than finding a brewery passionate about bringing that back. And that's what I found in Braybrook. A wholesaler, a chef, a brewer and a farmer who came together over love of lager and happened to know of a spare barn. Nick, Cam, Mario and Luke were fantastic hosts as they talked me through the concept and conception. A Franconian inspired brewery in the heart of rural England, brewed to supply great restaurants with a better, truer kind of lager. What's important with lager and, and why we were really keen to do that was, was its ability to go well with all different types of food and... Yeah, very versatile. You know, have something that's good quality as well, because I think, you know, there's a, there's a lot of generic, mass-produced, boring stuff, and actually if you go to Czech Republic or, or, or Franconia or wherever in Germany, you, you're going to have the, the small producer, you know, family-owned breweries that are akin to the wineries that all the restaurants work with, and that, that was, you know, mm. that was kind of the idea, I suppose. They're definitely doing it the hard way, but with lager, maybe there's no other choice. It's not easy to make. There's nowhere to hide the flaws like hop astringency, fermentation off flavours or a lack of freshness. The process takes twice as long as an ale to make and lager taps where the fiercest competition for space is found. But if craft beer has won the battle for choice, it's now got to win the fight for balance and drinkability. There's a great variation in lager, but they're all united by the way they make drinking as instinctive as breathing. Even though there's been so much variation in craft beer and that's the strength of it, as a style, there's nothing more drinkable and the kind of thing that just drink, draws you back yeah, is, that's, is lager. It's what you keep going back to, or certainly I do. Yeah, that's right. And then uh, there's, well, there's there's great variety within lager, like there is within ale. You wouldn't mm. just say ale. In general, the main, the main thing about it is its drinkability in all sorts of situations. And I think that that's a great characteristic for all of beer, really. Or yeah, most beer, it's weird. We talk about drink drinkability in beer. No one talks about eatability in food. Like yeah. whatever you make should be yeah. super drinkable. That's, and that's right. What lagers yeah, yeah, that's happen. right. I mean, everything's got you know, you know massive imperial stouts or, yeah. or like really extreme sour beers have their own place. But as a daily beer, nothing beats lager. It's meant to be brewed slow and drunk fast, not sipped at, but by the pint with hearty food. But how does that drinkability come to be? It seems to be a combination of great sourcing and even when adding twists, a strong respect for the traditional processes. So bizarrely, this is only the second time we've actually done a film in a lager dedicated brewery. Uh, the first one was Lost and Grounded. So talk me through the way that you make it, the sort of the Franconian way. So um, the, our flagship beer is our Keller Lager, which is an amber lager, about 4.8%. Uh, and we make it the proper Franconian way. So we start uh, from the malt uh, that comes from Bamberg, uh, Pilsner and Munich malt. Mm -hmm. uh, we crash it here and uh, we mash in in our state-of-the-art kit, which is a German-style kit. Uh, so we can perform a decoction mash. Decoction is so you have your normal mash at a certain temperature and yeah. you're, you're bringing stuff out, superheating it, popping it back in. Yeah, so we've got a steam generator, we can heat that up to whatever temperature we like. So we do different temperature steps. And the last bit, we transfer most of the mash into our lauter tun and the rest of it gets uh, basically boiled for a minute. It gets brought up to 100 degrees, um, boiled and then transferred into the main mash so that it raises the temperature. And right. that changes the flavor a little bit because it caramelizes some of the sugars and uh, it just gives you a, a deeper maltiness. Yeah. 
So this is a whirlpool. So you yes. Adding so, a fair amount of hops, and you're getting good yes. So we only it. use um, uh, pellets in there. Yeah. There's no flowers. Use pellets in there, and then it all gets transferred in here. There's a classic whirlpool. The, the wort goes in that way. It just spins, and all the solids and protein and uh, hot bits just collect in the middle. And um, it's uh, also used, for example, for the beer that you're drinking, which I yeah, believe well, is a New Zealand say, pilsner. So this is quite a hoppy. Yeah, that's a New Zealand oh, pilsner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I believe. So that's you, a lot of New Zealand beer uh, hops are derived from sort of SARS and. That's from right. Yeah, the, but this is the same fact. A single hop pilsner. We only use Motueka hops, which, which used to be called SARS B. In SARS fact, B, yeah. back in the day, and uh, they are directly derived from SARS, which is a classic mobile hop used in. Czech Pilsner yeah. and uh, Matueka has obviously quite a different flavour, it's a lot more limey and uh, kind yeah, of vibrant, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, it's definitely. So a lot of like lime peel, uh, but it works really well in the same way that SARS works, so you can use it for bittering, you can use it for aroma, and in fact we use that at four different stages um, through, the, through the brew. So up to here basically you could make, you could do the same things that we do here and then ferment it with a different yeast and you'd have whatever, pale ale, saison, yeah. whatever. We've made a pale ale in here at the start, just a test kit, and it was made with exactly the same mash process, but with a different yeast, and that just gives you a pale ale. Well, here, what we do is that we go through our um, uh, heat exchangers here, and we pitch our yeast at nine degrees, and we pitch a lager yeast, which works at lower temperatures, uh, works a bit slower, and it needs an extended uh, conditioning, cold conditioning stage, which is called so lagering. So why does it need that? Um, uh, the uh, byproducts of fermentation uh, yeah, will be it. yeah quite intensely flavored so there will be lots of sulfur uh, there will be some diastole sometimes and uh, the yeast needs time to reabsorb all, um, all of those and yeah. that at the end that will give you a, a cleaner product so the lagering process happens um, these are fermentation tanks so we ferment in there for about a week uh, then just before the end of fermentation we cool the beer down a little bit. We always do uh, four to four and a half weeks lagering for our um, Keller beer. And we'll just, we just don't do any less than that because that's what it needs. Horizontal tanks are traditional, uh, but they work well for a number of reasons. First of all, is that they um, enhance sedimentation. So right. one of the purposes of lagering is that the yeast drops out and you get a naturally clear beer. And uh, these work um, well for that because there's a lot more surface area and just basically just less distance for the yeah. yeast to travel down. So it just works a lot quicker. So, so I mean, a lot of people when, when they think about lager, they think that it's very quick to, to make or very easy to make. It's actually incredibly hard, incredibly long. It, you know, in a, in a craft brewery, it clogs up the tanks. Yeah. You know, for four and a half weeks, that, that's more than time it takes to make a, 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 an IPA or a pale ale. Um, you've picked that because you guys love lager. What's the intention? How big can you go? How much can you spread? Or is it like a, you want to have that small Franconian kind of feel to it? Like you come here, you get amazing lager. You might not get it many places, but we know when you do, it's going to well, be magic. Well, it's good. I think that, you know, having been to Franconia many times, it's, uh, it's a magical place and you get that feel of, uh, you know, small family owned breweries that still, you know, make the same kind of thing and they're made for three, four generations. And uh, while we obviously can't necessarily replicate that because, you know, we've just started, of course, so we're lacking that sort of uh, history behind us. Mm. But the setting is very similar. Even when you look outside the brewery, it sort of looks a bit like Franconia, especially in the spring. And uh, small breweries have that sort of character and soul that we like and that we just we just want to you know we just want to keep doing this the way we do if we grow too much we might not necessarily be able to do this this way yeah there is however some room for expansion because you know we're a very small brewery even though you see a lot of tanks around here as you said it takes a long time to make lager so we can't really make that much beer here yeah. but you know we can fit a few more here and uh, make what a little bit more beer wall? Yeah, exactly. We've got that wall. We've got all this space. Oh, Look at this. They can just like spin around and do all of that. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to spin around in a room. Can, uh, exactly. Yeah, we can, you need to fill this. Yeah. We could, uh, we could swing cats in here. Or, uh, <laughs> just need more cats. Yeah, need more cats. <laughs> um, well, thank you very much for the tour. Thanks yeah, no for problem. having me. No um, the, the New Zealand Pills is just stunning. As, as, thank as, you. As I said in the intro when I tried it at LCBF. 
uh, and the color pills is beautiful as well with that little caramel hit it's bready and like, like the, the the lost and grounded like that's super dry but they're both kind of moorish and they mm. feel healthy even though they're definitely not i'm trying to say not trying to say that they are healthy drinks drink responsibly drink ex responsibly ish but it's wonderful to have a little taste of franconia now uh, that's available uh, in the uk and i know that america's starting to cotton onto that as well yes that drinkability needs to come back into craft beer that's uh, right and you guys are smashing it thank you very much so thank you very much indeed mm -hmm.